We humans have done pretty well for ourselves, evolutionarily speaking. Check out this sweet empire we've built that renders every other organism on Earth a second-class citizen. With our winning combo of dexterity, intellect, endurance, and a scrappy can-do attitude, we've managed to meet all of our material needs, and then some. But although humans are physiologically tricked out in a lot of ways, other animals have evolved capabilities we don't have. Sniffing out water sources, for instance. That ability seems like it would have been of great evolutionary advantage to us, considering that, relative to most animals, humans have exceptionally high water intake requirements. So, if dogs, elephants and vultures seem to be able smell water, why can't we? Before we get too far down this rabbit hole, Let's be clear about two things. One, science has always characterized the human olfactory sense as being just so-so. Though new research suggests we might be able to differentiate between around a trillion different odors, it's true that modern humans don't interface with the world through our schnozzes, as much as some other animals do. Two, water is odorless. This chemical element is a total non-negotiable requirement for almost every organism on Earth but it's just a couple of hydrogen atoms stuck with covalent bonds onto an oxygen atom. There's nothing smelly going on there. However, long enough in the desert a man like other animals can learn to smell water. Can learn, at least the smell of things associated with water. The unique and heartening odor of the cottonwood tree, for example, which in the canyonlands is the tree of life. Because although plain H2O has no scent, chemically pure water also basically never occurs in nature. You've got to make that stuff in a lab. So when other animals sniff out a water source, it isn't the water they're smelling it might be a water-loving cottonwood tree. Or it may be the other stuff in or around or otherwise associated with the presence of fresh water. Chemicals, bacteria, algae, plant matter or minerals. Humans, like all terrestrial animals, smell volatile or airborne compounds. Our class 1 olfactory receptor genes that detect waterborne odors are switched off so we can smell water via other compounds in it that get released into the air through a variety of physical processes. People have evolved to take pretty detailed visual and auditory inventories of their surroundings, and though our olfactory assessments aren't often as thorough as those of some other animals, we're perfectly capable of detecting a nearby swimming pool when we smell chlorine, and we can pick up on the sulfuric odor of a hot spring, or that mineral-rich, dead fish thing the ocean's got going on. Like Abby said, we might be able to teach ourselves to detect water sources, if we applied ourselves to learning the smells that go along with it. Another reason humans might not smell sources of water as well as other animals, is because we need a lot of it. Our bodies require extravagant amounts of the stuff, due to the way we sweat. Walking exclusively on two feet came with some physiological shifts that drastically raised our water requirements. One major shift is our ratio of eccrine to apocrine glands. Modern humans have more eccrine glands than any other mammal. These glands release water, and to a lesser extent, sodium from our bodies when we sweat. Shedding water through eccrine glands is less energetically costly than shedding nutrients through apocrine glands, which is why humans will always beat a horse in a long-distance race, as long as there is water available. Hoover suggests that between 4 and 7 million years ago, when our ancestors became bipedal, they became tied to sources of water, meaning they couldn't afford to sniff around. They needed to know where to find reliable sources of water in their home territories, or along regularly traveled routes. We have no way of knowing, but most likely our original home ranges included water sources that were cognitively mapped. As ranges expanded, new sources would be located, and maybe that next watering hole could be found by just following an elephant around for a while. Who needs a good nose when you've got brains? Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.